Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, this is part two of our look at square root and semicircles, and we're actually looking at semicircles now uh, in this part of the video. So, uh, real quick, going back to uh, when you looked at conic sections in Algebra 2, uh, standard circle with um, centered at the origin with uh, radius r, that equation was x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if we want to get y by itself, like we need all of our parent functions to be, we would subtract x squared from both sides, and that result would be y squared equals r squared minus x squared. Now we square root both sides, and the result is y equals, remember when you square root something, it's plus or minus, the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, where r is our radius, and of course our x coordinate is here, y coordinate would be here. All right, so this gives us uh, the basic starting parent function. The plus, we're looking right here, the plus part of it gives us the top half of the circle. And so it's a, it's a half of a circle, so it's a semicircle, top half. The minus part right here gives us the bottom half of the semicircle, okay? So the bottom, I should say the bottom half of the circle. So we have a semicircle on top, which is the plus part. We have a semicircle on bottom. That's not a perfect circle, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's why we need the plus or minus to make a full circle. So when we only are talking about the plus part, that's the top half. Only the minus part here, uh, that's the bottom half, all right? Okay, so let's look at these examples. So, uh, example seven, we are asked to sketch the transform semicircle, give the domain and range, and give a word description of the transformation. Okay, so let's start with the word description. So this two out in front. Well, that is out in front of the radical, so that is a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So we have a vertical stretch. I'm gonna say by factor of two here factor of two. Okay. All right. So that's that part. And then our radius, we need to talk about what our radius is. Our radius, this is our radius squared. So our radius squared is nine. So the square root of nine is three. So our radius equals three. And then we don't have any other transformations going on here. So now we can actually go ahead and sketch this graph. All right. So if we put um, a y-axis in here and an x-axis in here, now we can actually sketch it. So if the radius is 3, we have not horizontally or vertically shifted this thing at all, so the center is going to be right here at the origin. So we just go right 3, so that would be right here. Remember, this is the positive part, so this is going to be the top half of the circle. So that's at 3. Our radius is 3. And so we're centered at 0, 0, so we need to go left 3 for the other end point here. So that would be negative 3. Okay, so that part's easy enough. Okay, remember our radius is coming from the square root of that right there. Now we have a vertical shift at 2. So normally we would be here at 3. Okay, normally we'd be up 3 if we weren't stretched. But we are stretched by a factor of 2. So we need to double this value. So instead we're up here at 6. So we have stretched vertically this semicircle. So now it uh, looks more like, um, you might say, like more like a parabola or actually more like uh, the shape of an ellipse or something. It's, it's stretched. It's, it's uh, oblong. Okay, so this would be up here at 6. And that's enough uh, as far as the labeling goes. All right. So then we need to get the domain and range. So that's that's easy enough. So domain, we always start at the leftmost point. We're going to put a bracket because we're included, so that's negative 3. We go to the rightmost point, and that's at positive 3, and that gets a bracket. Easy enough. Range, we start at the very bottom. Okay, right here we're including 0. And then we go to the very top, and we're including 6. So we get brackets around both of those. So negative 3 to 3 for domain, 0 to 6 for range. We were vertically stretched by a factor of 2, and it's always good a good idea to identify your radius right here, and that's the square root of this number right here. 
All right, so let's move to the next example. All right, example eight here. So we have this negative out in front right here, okay? Going back to our notes, the negative means we're making the bottom of the circle. A negative out in the very front of any parent function reflects it over the x-axis because all my y-coordinates are now opposite. Okay, so I have a reflection over x axis, making all my y coordinates now opposite. Uh, my r squared value is 25. That's this value right here. Okay, so my r squared value right here is 25, so my radius, which is important, is 5. I have no other transformations going on here. So now I can make my rough sketch here. So I have y-axis here, x-axis here. Now we just, we're, we're centered about the origin. We haven't moved it left to right at all, okay? So we're going to be out here, radius away from 0, 0. So we're going to be out here at 5. And we're going to be out here at negative 5. I need to add some to this y-axis since we are reflecting over the x-axis. We're going to be down here. We're, we're centered at 0, so my radius comes down here to 5. Okay, I'm not stretched at all, so it's going to be um, a perfect semicircle with radius 5, just like that. Okay, now domain and range. So domain, go to the leftmost point, negative 5. With a bracket, it is included. To finish my domain, go all the way to the right. That's at positive 5, and it gets a bracket as well. So range now, go all the way to the bottom. I need to label that on the y-axis negative 5. Go all the way to the bottom, that's negative 5. Bracket, it is included all the way up to the top, that's at 0. So comma, 0, and that's included. Alright, easy enough. Now let's look at the last two examples and this video is done. Alright, in these two examples we're given the graph and we need to write the function. So it's always easiest, I think, to we're not asked to write down what's occurring, but if we will write it down, it will help us. All right, so we're we're uh, the bottom half of the circle, so we know we're we have a reflection over x, so we'll need to handle that. Um, then you can start with your radius. So go right to the center. So my center is right there. That's going to be important in a minute. Now let's identify my radius: one, two, three, four, five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are no stretches of any kind, and I can tell that my radius is 5. So my r equals 5, which means my r squared value, which I will need, is equal to 25, because remember, the r squared part goes underneath the radical here in a second. Now I need, I've need i got my center point right here. My center point is at negative 1, 2, 3, so center at negative 3 comma uh, and then it's moved down 1 2 3 so negative 3 negative 3 alright now I have all the information that I need so my equation for this one is f of x equals the reflection over the x-axis I get a negative out in the very front and then I have my square root part uh, my r squared value is listed first so that's 25 then I am minus, and then I'm going to put my x part in here. I did get, um, I need to write this down. We did move left 3 and down 3, okay? So that's why our center is at negative 3, negative 3. So to go left 3, I need parentheses here, x, and I go opposite of the sign. So that's going to be a plus 3 quantity squared. This is all under the radical. Okay, so that's that part. And now for the down 3. The down 3 goes out away from the radical, so it's like that. So this says, reflect it over the x-axis right there. That's the negative. This says radius squared is 25, so radius is 5. I've got that here. This says I am shifted to the left 3. This says left 3, so that part's good. I did go left 3, and this, and this says down 3. So everything's there that I needed. Okay, remember to square this x term. Remember from our initial function up here that x part needs to be squared. Okay, 
All right, let's look at example 10 and then we'll be done. All right, so let's uh, identify what's going on here. We have no reflections at all because we have the top half. Uh, we can check our radius. Um, starting right here, we can tell this is the center because that uh, part right there, it's pretty easy to see the symmetry. So there's my center. My center is at 0, comma, negative 2. Okay, so that already tells me that I did not move left and right at all, but I am moved down to so I'll need to address that now check my radius so one two three four five so my R value equals five check it this way one two three four five my R squared value for my equation then will need to be a 25 5 squared is 25 now what's going on here well it should be my radius is five so it should be one two three four five right here but it's not there. It's at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 away from the center. So it's doubled. Okay, so I have, that means I have a vertical stretch, vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, vertical stretch by factor of 2. So I've got everything I need. Now I can just write this thing. So it's f of x equals, remember, no. Uh, reflection of any kind so we're just going to start with the square root here and my r squared part goes first I've identified that right here 25 then it's minus I do not have a horizontal shift of any kind so that's just minus x squared under here but I do need to go down too so that's out here away from x with the sign so that's minus 2 okay so that's everything that I need whoops you know what I forgot the vertical stretch by a factor of 2. That needs to go out in front because when we stretch all our y coordinates by 2 that goes out in very the very front of the function. Alright so now we have everything we need. So vertical stretch by a factor of 2 check that's this part right here. Alright and then our r squared value is 25 because our radius is 5. Okay that's that part right there that this part is done. Uh, I do not have a horizontal shift of any kind, so that's just a minus x squared underneath right there. That part's good. And I have a minus 2 because I went down 2, so that part's good. All right, so that completes this part of the lesson. Final answer, f of x equals 2 times the square root of the quantity 25 minus x squared, and then minus 2 out here. All right, see you in the next video.